Welcome back. This week I'm documenting the building and assembling of the video wall and switcher for my lab. I like to show the final project first and then show the steps and how I got there. Here we have brought a picture of the basement lab and now we jump over to Fusion 360 where we've applied the same image. Turning off the canvas hides the image revealing the wall model behind. Now you can see the grommets installed to allow the video, network and power cables to pass through. This lower opening is here to allow the power bar to be connected outside of the cabinet. It allows easy access to the plugs and I can make sure anything is turned on or off when I need it to be. This project started by locating the video switcher on eBay for a good price. When it arrived, the flimsy postal envelope had a tear in it. So I opened it up carefully and I found that inside there was no packing. This allowed the corners of the unit to take a couple of hard hits and one corner was totally cracked and broken into pieces. Not a very good start. The seller quickly offered me a discount for the damage done and I accepted as the unit still worked. What can I do to get around these problems? And then it hit me that what I really wanted was a wall mount. So that's how the project started. Well, everything starts with a sketch around here. The box itself is a simple shape to model and the images were taken off the internet and applied to the front and back, which gives a nice realistic view here. The side flanges are 3D printed. The top and bottom bars were cut from wood and are there to keep the edges of the hole in the wall from being visible. Here the threaded pass-through connectors are modeled. They had to be big enough to allow the video connector to pass through, which pretty well eliminated everything that I had on hand. These turned out so nice that I printed five of them to be used all over this project. I'm still amazed every time that you can print threads and have them work out first try, even though I've done it many times by now. Here we're making some parts in the 3D printer. I've made all these models available on Thingiverse and the link is in the body for anyone who would like to copy this project. Once everything is printed, we assemble it and do a test fit. Here's the backer plate that's going inside the wall. It will sturdy up the drywall and prevent any damage. The backer plate also makes a nice template for cutting into the drywall. The switcher is being test fit in the new mounting bracket fits nicely. These screws will be tightened in once the wood pieces are painted and ready to install. These top and bottom wooden pieces need to be black so I'm going to rub on a little black urethane stain and hopefully that should be it. Ah, uh, looks like it'll need a second coat. It takes a lot of wires to make all this possible. At this point, I'd like to send a shout out to John Wood at Simple Connections for hooking me up with all the video cables to make this possible. Thanks, John. They worked well. I've transferred the mounting holes to the backer plate and then the backer plate holes to the drywall. And then the drywall screws are going to align the backer plate while the construction adhesive dries. Now with the backer plate securely located, I'm going to use clamps to squeeze the construction adhesive and allow time for it to set. It may look funny, but, well, it looks funny, but it works. 
Now for final assembly. And the finished product. The main monitor passed through. The CNC machine passed through. The Mac and Linux passed through. And last but not least, a view inside the nasty wiring cabinet. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you come back next week for when I finish up the large L-shaped unit. It was a dado nightmare.